assalamu alaikum welcome to virtual university i am suraya shafi your tutor for english today's lesson oh, i hope you are fine you had enjoyed your last lesson lesson 2 is going to be about using the dictionary to learn the pronunciation of english words now students of english are often worried about english pronunciation because uh they are used to looking at words and the students pronounce words the way they are spelled and english spelling can be quite confusing as far as pronunciation is concerned and students have uh, i'm sure you have often uh, had difficulty in correctly pronouncing the words you pronounce them the way you spell them now this lesson is going to be in two parts in the first part i shall familiarize you with a set of special symbols known as phonemic symbols that is a technical word phonemic these are the sounds symbols used to denote the sounds of the english language and in the second part of the lesson we shall work out a few exercises so that you are able to read uh, words in the dictionary and you are able to pronounce them now if you look at the diction uh, at your screens you will notice that i have written two words for you the words are chorus and church chorus is spelled c h o r u s church is also spelled c h u r c h in the first word chorus c h has a k sound k sound k in the second word church c h has a ch sound ch ch like we have it in urdu and punjabi jaise ke hamare yahan ch ni ch ki awaz nikalti hai yahan church mein c h church ki tarah ch church ki tarah bulaya gaya aur jab chorus mein uska k kaaf wala sound hai there is another word ration r a t i o n look at the word machine m a c h i n e now in both these words the sound is the same it's the sh sound but in the first word the letters are t i o n t i o n is pronounced as sh while in the second word c h is pronounced as sh right now the word chorus begins with the letters ch is pronounced as k while the uh, while the sound while the word church in the word church the letters ch is pronounced as the urdu punjabi letter sound ch and it's the same in ration and machine both pronounced as sh sound but they are spelled as t i o n and c h i n right uh now the problem is that students are familiar with the 26 letters of the english alphabet these 26 letters they are not sufficient they are not enough to describe all the sounds of the english language that is why you have problems when you uh, read a word and you don't know whether it is to be pronounced as sh or to be pronounced as k now phoneticians people who deal with sounds they have worked out a list of symbols and you will find that in your dictionary every word 
every word has its pronunciation written in this special script. You open your dictionary and you will see that the first, the word is there and the first thing that, that comes after the word is the pronunciation of, the word, of that word. And you will find that the pronunciation, the, those symbols are written within slash brackets. They are written in a strange script. Today, in today's lecture, in today's lesson, I shall teach you those symbols. Once you become familiar with those symbols, you will not have any problem in pronouncing English words. So these people, these phoneticians as they are called, they have used uh, symbols to represent the sounds of English. Your dictionary will help you learn the pronunciation of any word. And for this, you have to be familiar with the symbols, right? The symbols which are used to indicate each sound. All dictionaries have a table, a pronunciation table or key, either in the inside front or back cover of the dictionary. You make sure that you go through that list. All languages of the world use, regularly use a small number of sounds. These sounds are of two types. One, you are familiar with this word, are known as vowel sounds and the other known as consonants. Now, in English, there are 44 sounds. Please do not confuse these sounds with the letters of the alphabet. English has 26 letters of the alphabet, but 44 speech sounds. Now, we will look at the vowels and consonants of English and we will look at their symbols. Some of the symbols that have been used you are familiar with. You will find that you have come across them in while you were learning your uh, English alphabet. Some have been created. Now, uh, remember that your phonemic symbols, let me repeat this again, when you look uh, up uh, the pronunciation of a word, you will find that the symbols are within slash brackets, right? Now, I shall say the vowels of English and you will repeat after me. Look at the shape of my mouth, the lips and the jaw. Sometimes you will find that I will drop my jaw and sometimes it is tense like this. Now, English has 20 vowel sounds. Vowel sounds are those sounds that are produced without any obstruction in the mouth. Listen to this word um, E, A, in your um, in your in, in, in English lesson sometimes when you were in school, you learned the f there are five vowels in English, A, E, I, O, U, fine. But today you are going to look at the symbols that represent these sounds. Now English has seven short vowels. Repeat after me, E as in pit, E as in pit, a uh, as in pet, a eh, as in hat, a uh, not a, uh, a uh, as in pot, pot, short pot, 
अपने शॉर्ट पट का पता है ना वो गेम जो होती है तो वो जो पट वो है दैट अ साउंड पट ओ एस एन पॉट ओ कॉट ओ इन द वर्ड हॉट द साउंड दैट ओ साउंड दैट कम्स इन द वर्ड हॉट कॉट पॉट then you have this oo sound which you get in put right put the kettle on the fire put and then you have another sound the symbol is like e but upside down this is known as the shua and it is the most common sound in the english language this sound occurs in the in words like apa about right let me repeat again pit pet pat pat put pot about apa notice all these seven vowels were short you will notice the difference when i say the long vowels on your screen you will see the long vowels look at the symbols they are the same symbols the long vowels have two little dots in front of them tiny little dots and that those dots are a symbol that the sound is lengthened wo jo awaaz hai wo lambi ho jayegi jaise ke ki chabi hai ki in english we say ki and it is the same e sound but longer ki aap honton ki position dekhe aise ki when you, you when you said this word uh, this is sound in pit so the sound was short pit but when you say peat to the sound e sound is lengthened or symbol hai chhota sa i uske aage do nukte e ki fi c t the next long vowel is a as in the word ka fa o as in ko the ko po u as in ku tu and a uh, the a uh sound as in ka pa the cat purrs purr now these were the long vowels so in english you have seven short vowels and five long vowels and together they make seven and five 12 vowels right the difference is that the long sounds the long vowels have little dots in front of them while the short ones are without now i'll introduce you to another feature of english sounds and that is diphthongs diphthongs are sounds made of two it's sounds which are produced by combining two vowel sounds you have one vowel sound and then another and while you pronounce them you move from one vowel sound to another there is a movement a glide you move from one sound to another and in english there are eight diphthongs eight diphthongs now the first diphthong is a notice it is a a as in say 
he, re. It's not one sound, it's not ra, it's re. There is a movement, re. I, as in by, by, by this. And an English person would not say by, it would be by, right? Oi, that's another diphthong. Oi, as in boy, toy, joy. Notice it's a combination of two sounds. Oi, it's like this. Oi, they, by, boy. The next is ear, as in peer. When you look at something like this, you are peering at something. Peer, peer, ear, peer. Air, like in pear. The pears that we eat. Nashpati jise kehte pear. Typical English sound pear. Poor. Notice the sound in poor. It is ooh, poor. Right? And the last two as in go. It's not go, go, it's go. Ow, as in cow. If you look at your screen, you will see the symbols and you will notice that when you pronounce them, you move, the sound moves, glides from one vowel sound to another. It's a combination of two vowels put together. Let me repeat again, A as in bay or re, I as in by, oi as in toy, joy, ear as in peer, pear, you have the word air, air as in pear or hair, ua as in poor, o as in go, ow as in cow. Uh, a lot of our students say soap. Ab angrezi mein soap nahi kehte. Angrezi mein isko kahenge soap. There is a glide from the first vowel to the other. Soap. It's not soap. It's soap. Hope. Right? So, we looked at eight diphthongs, which are double sounds. We looked at seven short vowel sounds and five long vowel sounds. And you should become familiar with the symbols. Now we will look at the consonant sounds of English. Now what are consonants? Consonants are those sounds which are produced, when you produce that sound there is some sort of obstruction in the mouth, in the oral cavity. जब हम consonant वाली आवाज निकालते हैं, तो कहीं न कहीं मुंह के अंदर कोई न कोई रुकावट हो जाती है। कभी वो जबान ऊपर तालु से लगा लेते हैं, कभी दांत के पीछे लगा लेते हैं, तो कोई न कोई रुकावट हो जाती है। Now in English there are twenty four consonant sounds. Remember, in the alphabet you came across twenty six letters. Actually, the sounds of English are more than the letters of the alphabet. If you become familiar with these symbols, you will not have any problem learning the pronunciation of English words. Now, look at the consonants. There are 24 consonant sounds in English and these are produced by a complete or a partial stoppage of breath. Now you repeat after me. P as in P, P is that we eat. 
मटर जिसको बोलते हैं मटर प एस इन पी ब एस इन बी द हनी बी ठ एस इन ठो अंगूठा पैर का अंगूठा टो ड एस इन डो हिरनी डो ख एस इन कैप ग एस इन गैप फ एस इन फैट व एस इन वैट फ नोटिस द शेप ऑफ माई लिप्स फ नोटिस दैट आई स्टक माई टंग आउट अ लिटल फ इट्स नॉट थ इट्स फ फ एस इन थिंग द एस इन दिस स एस इन सिप एंड ज एस इन जिप श लुक एट द शेप ऑफ दिस सिंबल इट्स जस्ट लाइक अ लाइक एन अर्थ वर्म गंडोया जिसको बोलते हैं गंडोए की तरह ये ए ऐसे एस को अगर आप लंबा कर दें ऐसे करके तो ये वो शेप बन जाती है श एस इन शिप एंड य य इट इज लाइक द साउंड इन मेजर मेजर वेन यू मेजर समथिंग य य साउंड एंड देन ह एस इन हैट Now we've got three nasal sounds, sounds that are produced through the nose. M, as in map. N, as in nap. And N, as in hang. Now this is a sound which most students have problems with. आपने वो लफ्स देखा है sing. लिखा होता है sing. करतार सिंह हम जिसको अंग करके बोलते हैं ना अंग सिंग इट्स दैट साउंड बट नॉट अंग जैसे कि अंग्रेजी का एक लफ्स है सिंग आप आपने उसमें ग का की आवाज नहीं निकालनी सिंग सिंग करके छोड़ दे ग नहीं बोलना सिंग 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 दैट सिंबल एन वाला एन की एक टांग लंबी की हुई है दैट सिंबल इज फॉर द साउंड राइट नाउ वीव गॉट ल एस इन लेड लेड पेंसिल लेड ल ल एस इन लॉले र एस इन रेड य एस इन येट य य य एंड य कैन बी वेरी कंफ्यूजिंग जो पहले आपने सुना था वो था मे य य मे य वाला इट इज लाइक जेड सिंबल जो है वो स्मॉल छोटा जेड नहीं बनाते जैसे वैसे है ये जो साउंड में अब जिसको जे की शक्ल में है जैसे जे नहीं बनाते एल्फाबेट का जे ये वैसे लिखा हुआ है लेकिन आवाज है येट येट एंड देन व एस इन वेट व व आई वॉन्ट यू टू पे अटेंशन नोटिस देर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन द वे व एस इन वैट वैट वायलेट वायलिन व और व साउंड में बड़ा फर्क है हमारे बच्चे अक्सर इनको कंफ्यूज कर देते हैं जहां व कहना होता है वहां व कह देते हैं जहां व कहना होता है वहां व कह देते हैं एक निशानी है कि व साउंड जो है इट इज ऑलवेज प्रोनाउंस विद द अंडर लिप बींग बिटन बाय योर अपर टीथ होंठों को दांत के साथ दबाना है वैट सॉरी वायलिन बैट वायलेट फूल का नाम नहीं है वायलेट 
वायलिन ही प्लेज द वायलिन वायलिन अब गौर से सुने तो बड़ा फर्क है व और व में वेट वेन वेर हेयर द लिप्स आर राउंडेड व व में आप अपने होंठ को दांत से दबाते हैं तो आवाज में फर्क पड़ जाता है एंड देन एट द एंड वीव गॉट द च साउंड च एस एन चिन इफ यू लुक एट द सिंबल्स वन इज अ टी एंड द अदर इज द श साउंड चिन दीस टू साउंड च एंड ज आर मेड बाय कंबाइनिंग two symbols for chin for ch the ch sound is symbolized with a t and a long sh chin ch church chin choose ch and j as in gin ginning mill कहते नहीं है कि जी वो उनके उन, उनके पास एक जिनिंग मिल है वो मिल जहां रूई को जिन किया जाता है ठीक है जिन एंड द सिंबल्स आर अ डी एंड अ जिन राइट सो यू रिपीट आफ्टर मी फ ब द ये द ऐसे जैसे कि हमारा दाल है दाल वाली साउंड है द द द द वो है फ जैसे ते हे की बनी फ जोर नहीं थ नहीं कहना फ फ फ द स ज श य ह एस एन हैट ह ह ह साउंड म न म न देन ल र एन व च एन ज एन वी हैव गॉन थ्रू द ट्वेंटी फोर कॉन्सनेंट साउंड ऑफ इंग्लिश यू नोटिस दैट वेन दीज साउंड दीज कॉन्सनेंट साउंड वेन आई वॉज गोइंग थ्रू दैम there was some blockage some obstruction in the mouth when i was saying these sounds don't be frightened by the symbols they look frightening at the beginning but once you go over them again and again you go over them and you will find that some of them are you are already familiar with and uh there are a number of exercises given in the package and when you go through them you will find that it's no problem you will not have problems with pronouncing english words now that was one area the other area that is related with english pronunciation and is a problem that is the area of stress now what is stress stress is the extra force used in pronouncing or speaking on a particular word and you will find that your dictionary is very helpful because english is a stress timed language जब अंग्रेजी बोलते हैं तो हर लफ्स पे किसी ना किसी लफ्स के किसी हिस्से पे जरा ज्यादा जोर दिया जाता है एक हिस्से पे नहीं इतना दिया जाता है एक हिस्से पे ज्यादा दिया जाता है एंड फॉरन लर्नर्स ऑफ इंग्लिश लाइक यू एंड मी वन वी स्पीक इंग्लिश वी डोंट नो विच पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इज टू बी स्ट्रेस्ड एंड योर डिक्शनरी कम्स इन वेरी हैंडी इट इज वेरी हेल्पफुल your dictionary will tell you there is a little signal there is a little symbol used in the dictionary and once you become familiar with it you will have no problem in knowing where to place the stress the dictionary will indicate this stress 
by a tiny mark on top of the word. You open your dictionary, look at any word and you will find that where the pronunciation is given in slash brackets, you will find a tiny mark at the top. You will also see a tiny mark at the bottom, but we are not looking at the marks at the bottom. We are only going to look at the marks that are at the top of the word. If you open your dictionary, take the word mother, you will notice that when you say the word, it is not mother, it is mother and the stress falls on the first part of the word, mother, ma. You open your dictionary and you will see that where the word mother is written in phonemic script, there is a tiny mark above M, above the M phoneme, mother. Take the word table, it is not table, it is table. The stress is in the first part, table and you, you open the dictionary and you will notice a tiny mark above the t phoneme, table. In the same way, look at the word after, you will find the symbol above the letter a, a after. Now in all these three words that I, it is the first part that is stress. Now in English, stress varies. Sometimes you will find that the first part of the word, of a word is stressed and sometimes it is the second. Some dictionaries will also give you the rules for stress, where the stress falls. You do not have to worry about that. All you have to know is that when you look up a word for its pronunciation, you must also at the same time look at where the stress mark is, the top mark on that word and that will help you to place the stress correctly. Uh, there are three more words given in your, on your screen. The word H O T E L, most of us pronounces, pronounce it as hotel, hotel, hotel. In English, it is not that, it is hotel. The stress falls on the second part, hotel. The word B A M B O O, it is not, ba it's not bamboo, it is bamboo. And you will notice in the dictionary, the stress is above the letter B, the phoneme B, B, bamboo. And in the same way, the word banana, it is not banana, it is banana. The stress is on na, banana. So, do not be upset, this will help you in pronouncing English words correctly. If you are learning a language, you must learn to pronounce the words in the correct way. Now, there are some words in English which have the same spelling, but they belong to different parts of speech because they are stressed differently. Uh, you have seen the word R E B E L, rebel. And there are other words, many words, same spelling, but different meanings. How do people know? It is from the way they are stressed. When the word is stressed, when the stress falls on the first part, rebel, the rebels laid down their arms. Here, the word is a noun, the rebels, the stress is on the first part of the word, rebels. 
when you put the stress on the second part of the word, it, 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 it changes its form. It's no longer a noun. It becomes a verb. Children rebel against their parents. The word is the same. It's spelled the same way, but it is pronounced differently. And because the stress falls on the second half, it's a different word. Children rebel against their parents. Notice the, the stress is on the second half. The word present, P R E S E N T. The, she gave me a lovely present. Present. The stress is on the first half, on P. The present was lovely. She gave me a lovely present, right? But if you say, the teacher says to you, please present your work. It's the same word, but the stress is on the second half. Present. It becomes a verb. And the same word becomes an adjective. Were you present at the party? Right? Now, let me recap for you. Let's go over what we've done in this half of the lesson. You have looked at the sounds of English and how those sounds are converted into symbols. These symbols are known as phonemic or phonetic symbols. All dictionaries, all language dictionaries will carry a page, a list of these symbols. If you want to learn the language, you must learn how to pronounce the words. You have learned the vowels of English, the symbols for those vowels, you have learnt the symbols for the consonant vowels and you have learnt the symbols for the diphthongs. So, all in all you have learnt 44 sounds of the English language and with that we come to the end of the first part of our lesson. You will now listen to a very interesting passage on computers, computers in our daily lives. And after that, you will have a comprehension test of what you have heard. Computers in our daily lives. Computers are now an integral part of our lives. Many things that we do during the course of the day, public or private is affected by them. Visit any public organization or office, from hospitals to schools, from the meteorological bureau to the stock exchange, and you are sure to come across people working at computers. Gone are the days when entries were made manually in registers and ledgers at the bank. Now all monetary transactions are conducted by the computer. Most films and TV advertisements use graphics or pictures produced with the help of a computer. There is hardly a severe, uh, sphere of life that does not involve the use of a computer. Even when you go out on personal errands to the travel agent to buy an airline ticket or to book a seat on the intercity bus, to the shopping plaza or a grocery store, the man behind the computer often uses a computer equipped with laser and barcode technology to scan the price of each item you put before him. And then he uses it to add up the price to present you with the total, all within minutes. A barcode is a pattern of thick and thin lines and spaces that represent characters that can be read by a scanner. The barcode identifies the item 
to which it is affixed. The scanner transfers the signal to a computer that matches the code to a price or inventory unit. Computers are no longer things only encountered outside the home. They are very much a part of household items. One cannot imagine a world without computers. Good comprehension is recognizing the main idea, right? Now, when you read or hear any passage, ask yourself the basic question, what is the main point the author is trying to make? The answer, to answer this question, you will first have to determine what the topic is being discussed. In the passage that you heard, the topic was computers and the main idea about the topic was the role of computers in our daily lives. Right? Now, we will do two exercises. One to test your um, listening comprehension and the other to practice stress. Computers in our daily lives. Computers are now an integral part of our lives. Many things that we do during the course of the day, public or private, is affected by them. Visit any public organization or office, from hospitals to schools, from the meteorological bureau to the stock exchange, and you are sure to come across people working at computers. Gone are the days when entries were made manually in registers and ledgers at the bank. Now, all monetary transactions are conducted by the computer. Most films and TV advertisements use graphics or pictures produced with the help of a computer. There is hardly a sphere of life that does not involve the use of a computer. Even when you go on personal errands to the travel agent to buy an airline ticket, or to book a, book a seat on the intercity bus, to the shopping plaza or a grocery store, the man behind the counter often uses a computer which is equipped with laser and barcode technology to scan the price of each item that you put before him and then uses it to add up the price you present and then he presents you with a total all within minutes. A barcode is a pattern of thick and thin lines and spaces that represent characters that can be read by a scanner. The barcode identifies the item to which it is affixed. The scanner transfers the signal to a computer that matches the code to a price or inventory unit. Computers are no longer things only encountered outside the home. They are very much a part of household items. One cannot imagine a world without computers. Now, which words did you hear? Did you hear the word integral? Yes. Did you hear the word games? No. Machines? Yes or no? Ledgers? Yes. Flight? No. Involved? Yes. Maintain? Yes. No. Errands? Yes. Grocery? Yes. Libraries? No. Bookkeeping? No. Encountered? Yes. Scanner? Yes. Art? No. All right. Next, exercise two. Um, in this exercise, we shall 
you repeat after me and we shall practice stress, placement of stress in these words. Students often find uh, the words that we are going to do, uh, go through now, find problems, they have problems placing the stress. Some of these words, if you look up, uh, look them up in your, in your dictionary, you will find will have two uh, sets of pronunciation given you. One will be the American, the other will be the British. Both are correct. You just be consistent, whichever one you prefer, keep using that. Now, listen and repeat after me. Advertisement. Advertisement. Affected. Affected. Affixed. Affixed. Bureau. Bureau. Character. Character. The word is not character, it is character. Computer, computer, exchange, exchange, inventory, inventory, manually, manually, meteorological, Meteorological, technology, technology, thick, thick, transactions, transactions. Well, I would like to give you a short you can do this exercise at home. T write down three words photo, photograph, photography, photographic. Look up these words and notice where the stress falls you will notice that the stress keeps changing. You should not make any mistakes in placing the correct stress after this lesson. Now, before we end today's lesson, I would just like to go over what we have done. You have learnt the sounds of English the vowels and the consonant sounds, you have learnt their symbols and you have learnt where to place the stress. You are going to use your dictionary to learn the pronunciation and stress of English words. Now, before we end this lesson, I would just like to talk about what we will be doing in our next lesson and uh, we will be talking about comprehension. Good comprehension is recognizing the main idea. Now, whether you hear or read a passage, you ask yourself the basic question. What is the main point the author is trying to make? Whether it is a passage that you hear or a passage that you read, always ask yourself this question, what is the main point, what is the main thing the author is trying to say. And to answer this question, before you can answer this question, you have to find out what the topic or the subject is being discussed. In the passage that you heard today, the topic was computers and the main idea about the topic was the role of computers in our daily lives. So, till next time, 
just think about this. Next time our lesson will be about the topic about how to find the topic and the main idea about a reading passage. Till then I have given you homework just go through those three words four words photo, photograph, photo, mm, go through them see where the stress falls and spend your time practicing stress. Thank you. Allah Hafiz.